Hello again. In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to parse DNA sequences from FASTA files. But first, I've got to cover how to download multiple DNA sequences in a single FASTA file. So navigate to Google or DuckDuckGo. Just write down NCBI. And here you can search for PubMed. Inside PubMed database, you can write down the name of a, an author or something from a title of a publication, for example, Hervey S. So Hervey S is a name of a family of viruses, human endogenous retrovirus families. And this is a publication that talks about this family of endogenous retroviruses. So they have talked about lots of DNA sequences from human tissues and other primates and they publish their DNA sequences. To get their DNA sequences, you go to related information, you click on nucleotide, and this gives you a list of nucleotide sequences or DNA sequences that they've worked on. You can navigate to the FASTA files here by clicking on FASTA or downloading them here. Click on complete records, file, FASTA, and then create a file. And once you've done that, you can get your DNA sequences. So I've got that one in my repository here. And as you can see, this is my FASTA file containing the DNA sequences. So this contains the list of the DNA sequences, which is actually a list of 33 DNA sequences that was published by those groups of people. So in this tutorial, we are going to work on those DNA sequences. And we need to import a library called bio from BioPython. So we write down from bio import seek IO. And we need to have a variable that can parse the DNA sequence part or elements of the DNA sequence. We need to actually make them a list. And the best way to do that is to have a uh, either to have a generator then convert it to list or an iterator. So we use list comprehension. So the name of our variable is DNA seeks and they can, this can contain a list. Write down REPR for rep, repr, and in between brackets or parentheses, write down seek underscore record. This is another. Um, variable dot seq for seek underscore record in seek io object dot parse. This is where you parse your DNA sequence. So what do you want to parse from what? So we want to parse FASTA file from the sequence FASTA file. So we had the file name sequence we write down dot faster then comma and you can press enter then you supply the format which is faster so this generates a list for you that can contain the uh, DNA sequences so you can print this variable to see what you have here DNA underscore seeks Save and run that, and let's see what we get. Sequence dot fast. So I have a spelling mistake. Dot faster. This is faster. Right. Now this is a list of the DNA sequences that we have in that file. Well, it just shows you the beginning and the end of the sequences. We don't want this line of text. Then we also need to have their IDs. So we can request for the IDs of the DNA sequences that are stored in the file. To do so, you can write another variable and assign data to it. DNA seek underscore ID. This is another variable. 
So we do the same procedure for the sequence IDs. So you can write open close parentheses, seek underscore record. This one dot ID instead of dot SEQ or seek underscore record in SEQ. This is dot parse. Here we need to supply the same file because we want the headers from the same file. Sequence dot pasta and comma. So we want to return pasta. Let's print this out. So by confusion here. There we go. So now this is the list of the um, accession codes actually sequence IDs from the files that we have. Actually, the DNA sequence is in the file. We don't want this as well. Now, we can read the DNA sequences. So you can have, like, if you want to plot them, you can have axes, like x-axis and y-axis, and then count adenine, thiamine, guanine, and cytosine from those DNA sequences to iterate uh, over the elements of these two variables. So let's create a different uh, iterator or list comprehension. So let's go for list comprehension. We need to have another variable and this is a generator that can contain a list in it, in a list comprehension. We write down i for i in DNA underscore seek underscore id. Then we need all of it here. So we start from index one, which is the second one to the end. Then we do the same thing for the sequences. This is for the IDs and we do the same thing for the sequences can just change the name of the variable. So DNA underscore SEQ equals open close parentheses, open close brackets, I for I in DNA underscore seek, call it seeks, then one to the end. So this actually gives us um, a list of DNA IDs and DNA sequences. And this is different from the one that we showed ab above because we want this list to show the contents and then do counting afterwards. So in the X axis, we need to have a string of, if you want to plot the um, contents and the let's say adenine content, GC content, or whatever you'd like to get from the files, we need to have coordinates like X and Y coordinates for the X and score axis. So let's name this X axis for now. We have another list comprehension, but we change the content to string. So we write down string, open, close um, parentheses, I, which is for every element that is converted to string, right, for i in DNA underscore IDs. So this converts the elements to string because we want the x-axis to contain strings. For the y-axis, we do the mathematical operations, for example, counting. So write down y-axis equals I dot count, let's say. So you might want to count adenine for I in DNA underscore SEQ. Here, this is a number, a list of numbers. This is a list of strings. So in the coordinates, you get like the X axis containing the names and the Y axis containing numbers. So you can print them out first. 
print x axis and to see what you can get then print y axis so let's print him and see what we get this is a list of the ids of the dna sequences that we have in the file and this is a list of the adenine counts in each of these files or each of these dna sequences inside the major file that we have so that's it for now in the next coming tutorial i'm going to plot these two variables oh i'm going to actually first change these into data frames in pandas and then plot them in different uh, plots using matplotlib